Sounds good. Hello. I am guessing people can see me now. No, there's no one online yet. Online? Wow, what? They show offline. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to start. Um, so my name is Alejandro Hernandez. I am a Yocto developer. I've been working on the Yocto project for about five years. Um, and uh, the title of my presentation is Developing, Building, and Testing Your Bare Metal Applications Using the Yocto Project and the Open Embedded Infrastructure. Um, I, I, I work in the uh, Azure Sphere team on, on Microsoft. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead. So the, the latest changes that we are seeing in the market is that um, there's more and more uh, embedded devices that have uh, multiple architectures. Um, there, they either have multiple um, cores or in the same SLC, or it could be different. Uh, regardless, uh, we can see that the trend is that we are uh, distributing the work depending on the application on different processors or the cloud. So small things go on a small processor and then you have a sort of like a big processor where you can have an operating system and then you can have uh, things that you have to uh, need, require computing power, go to the cloud. Um, this is, for example, the Azure Sphere device. It is a multi-architecture embedded device. And this is just an example, but and while this is a mo much more complicated uh, device and focus on security, uh, the idea of this thing is that you have to start somewhere and you have to start developing your uh, bare metal applications. You can do that on the uh, Yocto project or Open Embedded. I'm trying to click. <clears throat> okay, so first I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the uh, runtime testing infrastructure that's on Open Embedded already. Uh, I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit between um, the what the application is in the uh, in in the infrastructure itself, the uh, so it might be confusing, but let me know and and I can just go back. Um, weirdly, I am now going to try and focus on the application uh, that because what's important for me, the message that I want to pass on is that what the infrastructure uh, allows you to do and how you can take advantage of that, regardless if you're using. Uh, or building a Linux operating system or building a Redmond application. Uh, so I'm gonna try and focus a little bit more on that part. Um, so first of all, how, how does it work normally, right? Uh, the uh, <clears throat> Open Embedded was in the Yocto project where it's self-designed to build a Linux operating system. So the way it works um, or the way it was assigned uh, the testing infrastructure, it's also for a Linux system. Um, how do you test the Linux system here? Uh, runtime, uh, you uh, inherit the test image class, you set the target, uh, the test target as QMU, which is uh, set by default, you don't have to do anything. And um, you define the test suite that you wanna run. Now, um, there are different uh, test targets that you can set. An example is this, the QMU one. There's another one that you have to put, a, a, it's called simple remote and uh, you just define the IP of the target and then it sends commands through uh, SSH. Um, and then the test suites, um, <clears throat> they're basically, the, that that's what you actually test. Uh, a simple, in, the, in, in this case, for example, there's ping, there's SSH, SCP, parse logs are just examples of the test cases that already exist there and they're being tested uh, on a daily basis. Um, it's important that um, the way that the test suites are defined that, that there's the order in which their process matters. So the, if you're trying to run um, SCP, so for example, I, I put an example here. Uh, if you put the test suites at SCP, ping and SSH, SCP would be skipped because it depends on ping and then ping would be run and then SSH would be run because ping run before that. 
uh, the correct way it's ping and then SSH and then SCP. Uh, those are just examples. You can take a look at the uh, directory, the MetaLib OEQA uh, runtime cases, and those are all the, the cases that are available. You can certainly define your own if you have uh, your own application you want to test it. Uh, you can just put it there. Um, so that's how Linux is tested uh, on an everyday uh, basis. So again, the the important thing here is that that's the way it was designed. And the what we try to do is uh, how can we, without breaking what's already there, how can we uh, modify that to make it work for different applications whether they are a different uh, Linux operating system, a different o operating system, RQOS or something, or a uh, bare metal application. So this is an example of the uh, tests that when you run the test, I don't know if you can see this, uh, it's, it's a bit small. But anyway, if you run the test image uh, task for an image, for core image minimal in this case, you can see that um, uh, in this case, it's it's complaining. The SSH test is complaining because I didn't put drop bear or open SSH on my image, so it can't run it. But either way, it, tell, it uh, tells me some sort of report that uh, I had one success and was one skip, no failures and no errors. So that's how it normally would look like. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the. The modifications that I mentioned before uh, are this ones, and um, these are part of the test image class and also of the QMU runner uh, script that, that that we use as a helper. Um, I think it might be easier. Those are the commands that are defined. These are commented out on the class just for information, and you can set your own depending on your own needs. Uh, and these on QMU runner, they're defined as the default. But if we, I think this will make it clear. Um, I can barely see myself. But um, so what happens here is that there's some sort of uh, communication between the host and the target. And it's uh, it has to be synchronous. So uh, the host tells the target to start booting. And then the target at some point reaches a login prompt. Then it tells that the, the host is constantly reading the output of the target. Um, once it's uh, that once we detect that the login prompt is there, it tries to log in as root. Uh, if you have uh, debug tweaks on on your image features, uh, then what happens is that the target prints out a the root at and then the host name. So um, there's a pattern that's defined on those uh, variables that I showed previously, and <clears throat> that's when the holes detects that uh, there was a success logging in, right? Uh, so after that, it tries to send some sort of command, let's say ping, and uh, then it checks again for another prompt, which means the command already exited, and then it checks the uh, if that's, it asserts uh, the uh, the output of that, right? So again, if we go back here, this is what's defined on on this thing. Um, it, this uses a syntax uh, very similar to the one on package configs. And uh, if you're familiar with that, it's a lot easier that way. The You ha you can override certain uh, patterns uh, only if you want to, because one of the thing is that, for example, this by default was only able to log in with root and that was not modifiable. You can do it, anything like that. Uh, so in this case, if you have your own uh, Linux operating system, and you you're not using the the root uh, user, uh, you can change that, right? You can just change the send login user, and you can put whatever uh, your user is. Or if you change the uh, uh, the prompt, uh, you can also change that, and it'll work. The infrastructure will work for your own uh, uh, application or or operating system. So the next part of the uh, presentation is the bare metal toolchains and, and applications uh, on the Octo project. And um, I'm gonna go through it a little bit here. Um, so we've had some progress into um, allowing the Octo project to build different toolchains. Uh, one of them is a 
a toolchain for very many applications. And since you already have the toolchain, you can just compile your sources for that, and then you can get a running uh, application up for some uh, architecture, right? Uh, so if you want it, there is an example on the Octo project on Metaskeleton um, that I put in there. It's called Bare Metal Hello World. It's a very simple example. There's not, um, there is, it's just a Hello World. Uh, but if you wanted to reproduce that, you can just do that following the, the steps that are on the screen. Uh, basically, you clone it, you add the Metaskeleton layer, and then you set your machine. In this case, I, I set it up for a QMU ARM64. And the uh, TC Leafc, I set it up for uh, bare metal. I put that on my local .conf, and I try, I run uh, BitBake uh, for bare metal hello world. <clears throat> after that, um, after that, after your build is done, um, you can just run run QMU, and that's integrated with that as well. And it'll run a uh, the application on QMU. And you'll see hello open embedded on the uh, on your screen. Um, some interesting targets there um, are the meta toolchain target. Uh, if you run Bitbig meta toolchain, you will end up getting a uh, bare metal toolchain for ARM64 uh, architectures. Um, <clears throat> bare metal hello world, and then C populate SDK. Um, in this case, it wouldn't do anything because. Uh, it wouldn't add anything to Meta Toolchain, but let's say if you have some sort of dependency for some reason for anything else, um, you could create your SDK that will have a an extra dependency that you require for your uh, application. And another thing that's interesting is switching the the TC Leafc. So instead of using bare metal, as I put it here somewhere here. Um, you can use TC Leafc, and for this specific application, it wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't do anything different because uh, TC Leafc, uh, uh, sorry, NewLib is is capable of running bare metal applications, but NewLib is a C library that's meant for uh, embedded operating systems um, or embedded applications, and uh, it'll be able to run it. But at the same time, it will provide you more things than just the bare metal one. The bare metal one just it's 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 pretty much bare bones. The the, the new lib has a little bit more uh, things on it. Um, okay, so now how do you, uh, I'm gonna switch a little bit to the uh, application part. So um, how do you create your bare metal application? Well, I, I went and uh, poked around the, uh, the source code of QMU um, and was able to get the address of uh, the UART, which is, how I wanted to print the uh, the hello open embedded part, and um, so I went and read uh, the the data, the data sheet for that. Uh, in your case, for every SOC would be different, so you kind of have to go and read the data sheet and then see what uh, registers you have to write on and stuff like that. In this case, uh, I was able to get that. I got the um, the UART address, the RAM, uh, how how we, how QMU sets up the RAM and uh, where it puts the kernel. So um, if you pass the dash kernel argument to QMU, it uh, QMU puts it in, in a certain address, right? So that's what I kind of needed. Um, also, um, I went and looked at the uh, ARM developer manual and um, the UART uses a PL011 uh, driver. And uh, from the ARM developer's manual, you can look at the registers that are used for the UART. In this case, are there are several uh, registers that are in interesting there. Uh, the first one is UARDR, which is a data register. Then the second one would be the uh, receive status and the clear register. And also another important one is the um, FR, the flag register. So for the I'm gonna go back a little bit. For the, let me share my screen a little bit. Give me a second. So for, for the application that I just showed you here, uh, this one, that one, there's not much that's needed there. Um, Let's see, just print out something in the 
in the screen. Uh, okay, I hope you guys can see this. Uh, so this is just the source code of the the bare metal application for that the one that you're seeing on your screen. Uh, it it simply prints hello open embedded. And as I said, I uh, I had to get the address for the UART base uh, <clears throat> where it's located. And all I do is uh, I uh, basically try to print a, uh, a string. And that string basically just checks when uh, when the uh, when it hits the end of the string. Um, while it not it doesn't hit the end of the string, uh, it starts putting uh, pointing the the character to the uh, the, the DR register the data register. Uh, now uh, another interesting thing here is that the uh, there's no main function because this is a very application. So usually on a Linux or, or something else. Uh, you have uh, the uh, C runtime that comes from from libc, right? Uh, but in this case, we don't have that, so we have to tell we have to be able to tell the uh, <clears throat> the compiler and the linker how is it going to start the application. So for that, we have two different things. One of them is the uh, startup code. Uh, again, normally you would get this from the C library, but in this case, it doesn't uh, have it. So I have here. A, a simple startup code for for that, and I'm not going to go into a lot of details. But the important thing here is that um, I defined a an entry function. In this case, you can call it whatever you want. You just decide to call it C entry, but you can call it main if you want to. Uh, it because it's just when we're just going to jump once uh, it starts executing our um, application, and then the there's also a linker script that you have to define. Again, this is very specific to the architecture that you're building for. So depending on the SOC, you have to kind of go through the uh, um, the data sheet and, and see how all of this is defined. Um, <clears throat> so for example, um, the RAM on PMU starts at uh, 0x4 and a thousand zeros. And then, uh, so one, one of the things that I said that oh, while poking around uh, in, in the QMU source code, uh, you can see that once it gets the kernel uh, argument, it adds another 0x10000. Uh, so uh, that's how that's the address that I'm actually using. Then I define the different uh, sections of my uh, binary, the text section, the data section, uh, and stuff like that, and, and the stack, right? So that thing you need to pass to the compiler so it knows how to organize your binary, basically. Uh, and again, <clears throat> this um, this is what the, the code actually looks like. But while compiling, it has to first uh, assembly uh, the uh, assemble. Sorry, it has to first assemble the startup code, and then compile the application as an object file, and then link link it with the startup code and with uh, using that linker script that you define yourself. Um, so this is a very simple one. This is just the uh, hello open embedded. And the idea here is that, okay, how do I, going back a little bit, yeah. So going back a little bit to the, um, how do I use a test infrastructure from open embedded? Uh, this is kind of what my um, local.conf is, is looking like at this point. Um, I set up my machine as PMU ARM64. I changed it, uh, the TC libc, I changed it to new lib. And as I said before, as if I was testing Linux, I said uh, inherit and then test image. Uh, and then the test suites, I defined my own test suites and I was uh, lazy enough that I just used the one that I already had. Um, it's called FreeRTOS Echo. So I defined a FreeRTOS test just so I know that FreeRTOS uh, gets built every day and, and it's built correctly with the, the new changes in, in, in Open Embedded. Uh, I can actually show you that, give me a second. So that would be somewhere. For some reason, I cannot see that. One second. I don't know why.
There's an application missing from my screen share for some reason. Uh, okay, I hope you can see that. So there's a free Arches layer, and I just used that. Uh, I put a um, a test case here, as I said. So this is what a test, test case looks like, and it's very simple. Um, you just have to put it on the right path. Uh, I hope you, I hope you can see what I'm uh, selecting with the mouse right now. Um, so this is what a test case, test case looks like. It's very simple. I in my application I defined a special character, which is uh, the this thing, uh, so I, that it has a known behavior, and I know what I'm gonna get from that when I send that command through the serial interface, right? Um, so I was lazy and I decided to use the same test case for this one. I just defined a different behavior for that. So for example, uh, in this case, actually one second. Okay, so this is a lot easier this way. Okay, so in this case, I define, where is this? Here. Um, I define the following patterns that I wanted to look for. Uh, again, this is part of the uh, synchronous communication that has to happen. Um, the I define the search, uh, so I'm gonna check if I reach prompt, uh, uh, what I, the string I'm gonna check for is ELC 20, 2020. Then the login user is going to be COVID-19. The login succeeded. So basically when uh, the application tells me that uh, it, it knows the user COVID-19, it says not welcome. And then the command finished is just a new line. So the new, uh, the, the new workflow or the new flow looks like this. So the host tells the target to start booting. And then the target at some points uh, prints out ELC 2020. The, the target itself, no, sorry, the host uh, sends COVID-19 um, in the carriage return. And then the target says not welcome. And then the host says, okay, so I logged in correctly. And then it just looks for different commands every time uh, for every new line. And it just reads that, that part. Um, so, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit weird because I don't have any feedback from, I don't know if people are listening to this or not. Anyway, um, so that's how the pattern is set up like this is, oh, this is just uh, how I cloned the uh, FreeArctos um, layer and then I added it to my uh, bblayers.conf and I modified it a little bit. I just put a two warnings there of what I was sending and the output that I was getting. Um, and I, I modified it a little bit because I wanted to look for success instead of, as, as you can see from the previous slide, instead of uh, uh, the prompt, I would get success from the application. Um, <clears throat> so if I run that, um, if I run that, I can, I should be able to get something similar to this. Um, this is a screenshot of how that looks like. So if I run that, I, I'm able to run, it says that I ran the free uh test, the echo test, and then that it passed. So it, it got the command correctly. So it says, um, I sent the command that, and then I was able to read the output uh, and it said success, which means the application is working. And this is something that you would set up for like a CI or something like that, that uh, you, you want to make sure that your application, it's, it's being built correctly and changes to it. If there's several teams that are changing it or whatever, um, you have to make sure that it, it's, it's, it's working every single day, right? Um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of screenshots, so I will try and share my screen right now. Um, so you guys can see it running yourselves. 
and I modified it. I hope it works. Um, so I just ran test image for there it is. So I just ran test image for bare metal hello world. And uh, again, it says it's sending command, uh, the tilde or whatever you call it. And then uh, it got a success with a character turn there. And then the, the test itself passed. Uh, just to prove to you that I'm not lying, um, I can go and look at the layers. Where are my layers? Layers, meta free articles, and then live, OEQA, runtime cases. And then I have two cases there, but I'm using the echo one. So again, this is just what, what the uh, test case looks like. That's what the, what's being run by QME Runner. And the application in this case, oh, so I changed the application a little bit. I'm gonna show you that right now. Cause the original one was simply printing uh, uh, hello open embedded, right? So, for that, I will I'm gonna go into the source code and I'm gonna read some of the modifications that I made. So this is this is a new application that I I, I modified. It's based on the same thing, but uh, it has a couple of extras right now. I, again, as I mentioned before, I switched from using uh, TCLibc bare metal to TCLibc new lib. And the reason for that was because I wanted this kind of stuff here. So I, I'm able to get standard in and standard, uh, and string from uh, the C library. I defined other registers. If you remember on the uh, on the bare metal one, I only needed the uh, data register, which was this one. So I'll, all I needed was this and all I needed was the point uh, what I was, what I wanted to print there, but this is a little bit more complicated because I wanted, since I wanted to have that synchronous communication between the target and the host, I had to define some other things. And these are the ones I'm going to go back real quick. These are the ones that I got from here. So from the arm developer manual, uh, from the, the PL01, uh, UART, uh, you can get the correct registers for that in how the offsets are uh, set up. So application window, there you go. Okay, so the important thing here is that I defined a the the flag register. It's uh, it's it, it's offset it's defined here. It's offset the offset for the uh, receive status and clear uh, register offset is defined here. And then I've defined some masks because I needed uh, for the specific, the flag register, you have to get certain bits of it. So um, that's, that's what I used to get those bits. I defined a couple of functions here, read UART, put jar, UART zero, print UART zero, and then check command. Um, this can easily be abstract, but uh, I wanted to make it clear and define it differently. So, um, Again, um, so these are these are how the functions are defined. I'm gonna go to the end and try to like kind of go through it uh, real quick. So first of all, I have my C entry function and I have the same thing as before. I have a print the UART zero, hello ELC 2020. And then I have a while that pretty much just reads the uh, UART, whatever uh, it gets from the UART and then it echoes it. Uh, and at the same time, it tries to check if we reach the end of the line. If we did reach the end of the line, it calls the check command function. Uh, for the print, the print uh, changed a little bit. So <clears throat> the read uh, the read UART function is here, and uh, it basically just checks the pointer for the flag register and gets the correct bit uh, uh, for, from from there, right? And then if if that um, if it's able to read something from there, then uh, it, it it gets it and then it puts it on the on the UART. And if not, it returns an error. Uh, for the print itself, um, this function is pretty much the same as the other one. The only difference is the the I'm printing char character by character here. And again, I have to read. I have to mask the uh, flag register. Um, for the bit that I actually want. 
And if uh, I'm able to put something on the data register, I can print it and then I print character by character, right? And then the last inter interesting thing here is the uh, tech command, which is basically just a switch case, uh, but the, you can do that here. So you have to string compare that. And this is something also that you get from newlib, right? Uh, this kind of functions. Uh, <clears throat> so basically it checks uh, the buffer that I defined. Um, uh, for for the user in this case, and then it tells whatever string that I wanted to find. So I'm not welcome in this case, COVID-19, and then not welcome. And then it also checks for the known behavior that I mentioned before in the test case, and then it says success. Otherwise, it just says uh, unrecognized command. So I can actually go ahead and test this. Um, so if I just run run QMU, everything in the application is already defined, so it mimics an image, a Linux image, so it just uh, so, sort of uh, interacts correctly with uh, the OE infrastructure that's set up for Linux. Um, so in this case, as you can see, uh, the string that it being printed, it's hello ELC 2020. And then if I put COVID-19, it says not welcome, you're not welcome. And then um, if I was running the test case, I would put this, and hit enter and then I get success, right? So that means that the application itself, it's working. Um, and then whatever else I type is gonna say unrecognized command. Now, the this is the, the part where I, I was mentioning that I'm not gonna try and focus on what the application does a lot because that's kind of up to you. Uh, what you can create is up to you. Uh, this is meant to be a some sort of example of uh, how you can create your, uh, or a base, I guess, uh, how you can create your bare metal application using either the bare metal toolchain or the new lib toolchain and uh, use the test infrastructure coming from Open Embedded to test your application. So if you wanted to do something different uh, and yeah, you wanted a different uh, bare metal application, all you kind of have to do is uh, <clears throat> modify, uh, modify this source code and then instead of checking the command and printing that success, you can actually do something interesting like reading some sensor from the ADC or you know manipulating some LED or, or, or GPIO or whatever, right? It, that, that's up to you. Uh, but the, the basis of it, it's, it's already there. Um, another thing that I'd like to mention is that um, so when you're using new lib, this is, this is sort of like a hybrid because it's using uh, parts of the bare metal one and parts of new lib. Technically you can get the uh, C runtime, you can get it from lib gloss uh, if your architecture is supported. So if you wanted to make it portable and do this correctly for your specific SOC, you would patch uh, new lib or lib gloss in this case to get the C runtime correctly for all the applications that are meant to be run on your architecture. Uh, that will allow you to get rid of that part for the uh, startup code. That would just get, you would just get that from new lib and, and lib plus and in the, uh, the linker script as well. Um, I think that runs it. Um, oh, I actually modified it. Again, give me one second. Um, so I created a different branch. Uh, I'm pretty much done if you guys want to ask questions. Um, I noticed in the other presentations that the questions take a little bit to get here. So if, uh, uh, if you guys can't, uh, if I can't see the question, feel free to reach out later. Um, so I created a different branch here, new branch, and supposedly I changed code there. So if I recompile this, um, I'm recompiling the application with a different source code. It goes through all the process there. And then I just, gonna just have to run QMU. And then it says hello ELCE, and then COVID-19. Now welcome. And then if I wanted to test my image, please wear a mask because I'd like to present in person at ESC. And that's it. Uh, I'm going to go to the questions now. 
let's see, these are a little bit small. I'm gonna see them. Uh, lots of you are listening, cool. Um, so, one second. It says, can the, uh, can the bare metal recipe depend on other recipes? If yes, can they be built with CMake? And should they be built as a static library? Uh, yes, they can depend on, oh, let me show you one more thing. Um, yes, they can depend on other recipes. Again, um, it, it, it works with the build system itself. That's, that's what we try to do. We try to integrate it with the build system, how it works right now. So if you put something on depends, it's going to be there, right? So for in this specific case, I, um, I can show you the recipe for, do I see? yeah. So I can, this is the this is what the recipe looks like and that's on Metaskeleton, right? Uh, <clears throat> and there is, okay, no, there's no depends there because when, when I set up the uh, PC Libc new lib, you automatically get new lib as a dependency, right? But the idea here is that if you go through the recipe, Oh, this is not the correct directory. Um, recipe sysroot and then user lib. Uh, you can see that I have <clears throat> libc.a, which is new lib in this case. Uh, so yeah, you can depend on other things as well. And one other thing is that I had to pass, oh, this was it. Uh, on new lib, the no sysroot does not work uh, it's not set up that way. So I had to pass somehow in this case, I just hacked it, but I had to pass, uh, the search directory for libraries, uh, on the recipe. The make file itself has a, where is this? Here it is. So these are, this is what the make file looks like. And then it, it's, it's try to, I try to set it up in a way that it's understandable. Um, so it uh, assembles, compiles, and links. But the important part here, the one I want to show you is this part, which is passing uh, the libc.a, so, and it's specifically passing it as a, as a static library. So yeah, to answer your question, yes. Um, let's see. Uh, the, I have another question here. It says, uh, is this uh, free articles in the Yocta project nightly regression testing? No, it is not. Uh, no, it is not, but yes. So I have my own testing for the, since it's a, the free, I'm the maintainer of the free artist layer, so I sort of uh, test it myself. So here I have my, this is the free artist, oh, no, this is not the free artist layer. This is the free artist layer, it's on GitHub. Um, it says it failed, but don't, don't worry about that. I already fixed it. Uh, so this is being tested on a nightly basis. Uh, every day it is being tested on master, done, fail, CEOs, and wire. And actually you can get the artifacts from here. Uh, just to show you that it actually works. So master next, here is master next. I pushed it 14 hours ago. So yeah, this actually tests two things. It tests uh, free artos and it also tests the, um, uh, multi-config uh, builds. So it builds uh, Pokey for one architecture and FreeArtis for a different architecture. I think it builds uh, x86-64 Pocky and then FreeArtis, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, yeah, so so it, it is being tested on a daily basis, it's just not being tested as part of the uh, auto-builder from, from the Yocto project. Um, I don't think I have any other questions. So yeah, uh, if you guys uh, have more questions, uh, feel free to reach out. My email is alejandro.hernandez at microsoft.com. Um, and yeah, uh, anything, just, just feel free to reach out. Thank you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.